So we have a suitcase sliding down this ramp. And if at this point we know that the speed is 5 feet per second, we need to determine the normal force from the ramp acting on our suitcase, as well as the rate of increase of its speed. So we need the rate of change of its speed, also known as the tangential acceleration. So here is our suitcase, our normal axis is towards the center of the circle that we're on at this instant. So we might imagine that we're on something like this, a circle like this at this instant. And our tangential axis is in the direction of our velocity at this instant. As for our forces, we'll have the weight of our object, which is 10 pounds, given in the problem. We have the normal force. And we also have kinetic friction, which will be opposite the direction of the velocity at this point. And since this is kinetic friction, it'll be as simple as the constant times the normal force. So this really comes down to summing up, summing up the forces in the normal direction, Z equal to the mass times the normal acceleration, and the same thing for the tangential direction. So I'm going to sum my forces in the normal direction. And it looks like each one of my forces are in a direction, positive n direction, negative t direction. But this guy is in both the negative n and the positive t directions. So I need an angle to be able to find those components. And I look at our picture here, and I don't see any angle information given. Now, this happens sometimes. What you have to do is take the derivative. Remember, what the derivative gives us is the rate of change of this function right here. We actually have the exact path equation that the suitcase is taking. So if we find the derivative at, say, this point, remember what that gives us is the rise, the dy, over the run, the dx, at this point. And from that, we can find an angle. So what I want is the that instantaneous rate of change at x is equal to a negative 6. Here's our origin right here. This is technically negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I can compute the derivative equation pretty easily. It's just going to be a simple power rule. So that will be 1 fourth x. And if I plug in negative 6, I get a negative 1.5. So what this tells us is at this point along a curve, this curve is changing such that for every one unit x we go out, because remember this is over run, over one, that is our run here. So every one that we go in the x, we go downwards 1.5 in the y. That is the rate at which our curve is changing at that instant, at this point. You know what? This line right here is tangent to the curve. Same with this tangent axis here. It's just that I drew it to our brown blob there instead of to the curve. So really what we're going to be finding here is the angle in between this angle right here. 
and this whole uh, whole thing right here is that one that's just a drawing thing there so I'm going to do the tangent of that mystery angle will equal the opposite over the adjacent I'll keep this positive if I make it negative I know that it's just going to give me a negative angle and you know negative angle doesn't really mean much for me right here I just want this angle it's not like you know this this might be positive and this might be negative I'm not dealing really with angular position here so I, I just want the straight positive number if I do that inverse tangent I get a 33.7 and now I have that angle So now I can sum my forces in the normal direction. The normal force is positive, and I'll have a negative normal component of my weight, which I can grab using the sine, so minus 10 times the sine of that 33.7. equal to the mass which is 10 pounds over 32.2 remember the weight of an object is always its mass times its gravitational constant so I'm simply just dividing this G over on the other side to get M by itself and our normal acceleration which is V squared over R in which if this was the center of the circle that we're on at this moment this entire thing would be the R so we know that the V or speed at this moment is 5 feet per second the R we can again figure out from this information now this equation is very powerful it gives us pretty much all the information about this curve we could we could ever want about every point on this curve not surprisingly it can give us that curvature that radius of curvature information at every point as well and we turn to our special radius of curvature equation to grab that and to use it we need to know the derivative at our point in question which actually we already know and we need to know the second derivative at our point in question so I can calculate the second derivative here no problem it's really simple the second derivative apparently is just a constant of a fourth and of course I have to take the absolute value of it but that doesn't matter too much here so if I plug in a one-fourth here and a negative 1.5 and for our derivative we'll grab our r radius of curvature value we're getting at 23.44 and that will go right in here and with that we can calculate our normal force and if we run with that math We'll calculate and we'll get a 5.88. So that's one of our answers down. And now we can sum the forces in the tangential direction. And we'll have that friction going in the negative T and using 10 times the cosine of 33.7 we can find a component of the weight that's going in the positive t direction so we, we have everything we need here 
to calculate our tangential acceleration. And we're getting a 23, and that would be feet per second squared. So at this instant right here, our speed is increasing at an instantaneous rate such that for every second we are gaining 23 feet per second of velocity. And we're, our, our speed is increasing. We're gaining that velocity. We're gaining, we're increasing our speed. And it actually kind of comes right out and tells us that in the question. So not super hard of a problem when you break it down. This uh, angle trick here is a little obscure, but I've seen that around a lot, so keep it in the back of your mind. And of course, don't forget that radius of curvature equation as well. All right, I hope this problem made sense. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. In